It's Thanksgiving. It's a time when we're thinking of family, a cozy hearth, too much food, and comfort. The kind of holiday you'd imagine in a Norman Rockwell painting. Say Norman Rockwell and Thanksgiving in a single sentence, in fact, and an image jumps immediately to mind. It's Rockwell's most famous painting, and for good reason. It's the perfect synthesis of all his obsessions. Home, family, the wisdom of elders, the importance of tradition, nostalgia. It's deeply comforting, the kind of Thanksgiving we all long to have. It's one many of us won't have in 2020, but the painting's heartwarming essence is an obvious reason it's so well-beloved. There's another painting by Norman Rockwell, though, of another kind of Thanksgiving, and it always feels like the stronger work. It's more stark and less sentimental. It's the kind of Thanksgiving most of us will hopefully never have had. Titled simply Thanksgiving, the painting appeared on the November 27, 1943 cover of the Saturday Evening Post. It's instantly iconic for obvious reasons. A young refugee girl, draped in the massive slab of an American serviceman's field coat, huddles in prayer before her simple meal, served in a U.S. Army mess kit amid the rubble of what was once Europe. The message is immediately clear. This girl has been saved by American troops, and her thanksgiving is all the more meaningful than ours as we flip through this magazine, safe at home in the American heartland. It would be easy to dismiss Rockwell's painting as a self-congratulatory, if well-meaning, kind of propaganda, a way of reminding ourselves that we're the good guys and that it'll all work out. But there's more to it than that. From the date of the magazine and the painting's details, we know where the scene in question takes place. D-Day is still seven months away, So this must be southern Italy, the Western Allies' first beachhead on mainland Europe. The ruined columns tumbled around the girl suggest one of the country's major population centers, one in which she's nevertheless a refugee from war. The columns may have stood for centuries or longer, before succumbing to American bombs. The ends of a broken iron chain in the painting attest to the might of Allied air power, even as they symbolize the shattering of fascism's grip on this ancient country. But the most striking feature of the image, of course, is the contrast between the young girl's frailty and the hugeness and weight of the jacket she's been given. She's literally wrapped in the protection of the American army, the coat offering warmth and safety in stark contrast to her thin and tattered dress. It's easy to imagine her still shivering, her hands clasped as much to find warmth as to give thanks. And that's before you notice the most heartbreaking detail of the picture, the girl's shoes because they're not shoes at all, but scraps of burlap tied around her feet. Even so, in the moment Rockwell captures, she's temporarily at peace. Whatever terrors she's seen have let her be for the moment, and she pauses in prayer before eating, possibly for the first time in days. Her meal, a small portion of bread, shines like an ember of life itself from the humble steel pan of an army mess kit, perhaps the best meal of her young life. It isn't the first painting to weigh the spiritual importance of a meal against the moral choices of humanity. Farther north, at the top of Italy in the dining hall of a convent, there's another such painting, larger and much more well-known. In just a few months before Rockwell's cover was made in 1943, Allied bombs destroyed much of the building containing Leonardo da Vinci's Last Supper. The wall it was painted on had been heavily sandbagged in anticipation of such an attack, and by the grace of God or the laws of physics, it survived. In Rockwell's image, the jacket tells a story too. The American flag on its shoulder is tattered at the edges, suggesting the combat its owner had seen. But it's still flying proudly, the only thing in the painting that's square to the frame, its rigid grid of 48 stars regular and true. Paradoxically, this garment worn to protect her has recently been worn by its former owner, a man fighting and killing the girl's countrymen. We know a bit too about that former owner. The stripes, three up and three down, with a diamond at the center, tell us this belonged to a first sergeant, a man responsible to a few and responsible for many. He'd probably have been in command of all the men who came this way, and it's possible they're all sitting just out of frame enjoying a break for chow before continuing their march up the Italian peninsula. But the girl's quiet isolation in the frame and her sense of quiet peace in the moment suggests that the coat and mess kit are hers to keep, that the sergeant will scrounge himself another coat despite the coming December weather. 
and the picture might seem like a reassuring sentiment for Americans at home, eager to see the war ended, safe in the knowledge that their cause is just, and their soldiers kind as well as brave. And all of this is true. But still, the painting offers something more. It's a quiet rebuke of the failings of humanity, that the girl's momentary peace is due to something so meager as a warm coat and a scrap of bread is an indictment of what we call civilization. The white marble of the Corinthian column, destroyed by our crudest technologies, evokes prouder heights of accomplishment, the achievements of ancient Rome, the democracy of Greece. The painting shows us that while war is a crime against the vulnerable and the innocent, it's also a crime against culture and art and our common heritage. Even Rockwell's hand-lettered thanksgiving at the painting's lower edge is set in letter forms derived from the ancient Roman column of Trajan. Its formality is sobering and elegiac. To contrast this image with Rockwell's more famous Thanksgiving painting might seem callous, but there's a vital connection between them. The heartwarming image of a holiday meal around a family's table takes on a deeper meaning, if you happen to know the title Rockwell gave it. It's called Freedom from Want, and it's just one of a series of four paintings Rockwell made in an effort to sell war bonds. Titled The Four Freedoms, the series illustrates the points made by President Franklin Delano Roosevelt in his State of the Union address to Congress in early 1941, before the United States had entered the war. In addition to freedom from want, they are freedom of speech, freedom of worship, and freedom from fear. As a whole, the paintings represent foundational pillars of American democracy, the ideals that make us a beacon to the world. Viewed in this light, Freedom from want isn't a saccharine, idealistic view of the thanksgiving we all wish we could have. It's a human right, one which functioning democracies provide. It's thanksgiving in a just and decent world. Rockwell's other thanksgiving is a thanksgiving in a world that's not. But the last of these four freedoms provides a counterpoint of its own. Freedom from fear depicts another touching scene of domestic American life, as loving parents tuck their children into bed amid the safety of their humble home, with not a stitch out of place. Only the newspaper in the father's hand suggests anything is amiss. Its headline describes the murderous effects of war on faraway shores. It's the kind of horror America hoped to avoid when Roosevelt made his speech, and one the Italian girl of Rockwell's other painting knew all too well. Roosevelt, in fact, had settled the matter of when Americans would celebrate Thanksgiving, fixing the date to the fourth Thursday in November with the stroke of a pen in late 1941, just after Pearl Harbor. It was a move designed to extend the Christmas shopping season as America's new war began to rage, assuring a Black Friday more somber than any we know today. But Thanksgiving, of course, dates to much earlier, and to a much earlier war. Abraham Lincoln declared that the nation would celebrate Thanksgiving on November 26, 1863, four score years and a single day before Rockwell's wartime post cover would be published. The occasion for Lincoln's celebration was the decisive battle of the Civil War, the victory over Lee's forces at Gettysburg. And so America's love of Thanksgiving isn't merely a counterpoint to war, it's the product of war. And it's the product of survival as expressed by a cold, hungry Italian girl bundled in a GI's jacket. We're faced with the same search for survival today as we try to make choices which let us celebrate with loved ones, but safely. And when we think back even further to Thanksgiving's ultimate genesis in America, we must think about this. The first Thanksgiving was a meal shared by a proud, capable nation and the refugees whom they had generously fed and kept alive. And at that first Thanksgiving in 1621 in Plymouth, Massachusetts, the refugees were us.